Like when you're not like you, I took like what a week off or something and I feel like I'm so out of the groove Welcome back to the channel. So god, I feel like I have so much to catch up with you guys on first of all I had tonsillitis. Have you guys had tonsillitis? Like it sucks like it's it's the worst ever like so I was sick and I was really sick and I could hardly talk so that's why there wasn't uh, a couple of videos for a few days and we kind of redid the studio, if you could tell, so that's kind of cool. Um, I liked the sparkly background. I'll probably use that still sometimes, but like I really felt like I wanted to make more of like a 3D rather than so like flat. Oh, by the way, um, do you like my pet ghost that's right here? Yes, that's the shit, right? So that's my setup. Oh, so another thing that I wanted to chat about really quick. I was featured on a blog, which is right there. Do you see me? I'm right there. And um, it's lore.com, L-O-O-R-E.com. And I will put a link below. I would love for you guys to read my little interview that I got to do with Lore. It was so much fun. Hopefully I will get to collaborate with them again in the future. Um, they are a beauty blogging website, but it also kind of transfers into my paranormal because I get so many questions every day on why do you wear so much makeup? Why are you a female in the paranormal that's not, you know, the typical like hoodies and t-shirt and jeans kind of girl? And it's like, because I'm a cosmetologist, you know, like I have so many people every time I upload a video tell me that I'm into paranormal and I shouldn't wear makeup, which is ridiculous. So whatever. So go to laura.com and um, or go to my link below. They've actually titled this Crystal Leandra, the Paranormal Beauty Queen. So you have to read it. It's got it's like it's pretty awesome. So if you get time, please take a look at that and shout out and thank you to lore for the interview it was super fun and i really enjoyed it okay anyways back on track so i got sick you know and it was kind of it, it worked out to be honest because i've been talking about wanting to change up the studio a little bit just like i wanted it to feel more like of a blog vibe you know because i do i mean i do like beauty blogging and then i'm, I'm starting like this big like fitness regime like I ended up losing like 35 pounds over the last like five weeks, which is like super cool. I know you guys don't care about that, but anyway, I, I did decide to change the format because it just, it feels a little bit more, I don't know, at home, kind of bloggy-ish, I guess. I don't know. Next topic is, um, I had a really weird couple of weeks besides being sick and stuff. I wanted to address this really quick. I don't want to put a lot of time into this because I don't, uh, one, I don't think it's fair to all of the good people following me. And two, I don't want people to think that um, I hide from issues like this. So I actually um, somehow acquainted kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know if stalker is the appropriate term for it or if someone that was just really obsessed with my YouTube channel. And for some reason, this person, um, believed that every single upload I was putting on this Ghost Girl Diaries channel was somehow related to them. Like they took this, they took every single video very personally, basically thinking that I was doing each blog or video for this person, which obviously isn't the case. Um, and this person got really upset and uh, got a little bit crazy and I had to like do like a police report and like it was just really cr just psychotic kind of emails and stuff into that this person got really upset when they found out that I was in a relationship so anyway my point of this is is that I just don't tolerate you know abuse in any sort of way I know that I'm a paranormal channel I know that like 
I'm kind of real with you guys, but with that being said, I'm not gonna take that kind of abuse from anybody and I don't ever want someone else abusing someone on my channel. So I always remove, you know, not me, my team or myself, it's usually my team, they will remove any negative comments and, you know, anything that's directed towards me or if there's a negative comment directed towards, you know, you guys as like my friends and family and fans, I will never, you know, allow any sort of abuse to go on my channel. So anyways, with that being said, anybody that wants to be negative or psychotic, from here on out in the future, I will treat you like I've treated the others, which is you will be blocked and removed from my channel and you'll never be back on. So anyways, let's move on, shall we? All right, now that we have moved on, I wanted to also let you guys know that I have to give a super big shout out to Shannon. Shannon, are you out there? Hopefully you're watching. I know that you're a new subscriber, but Shannon was so cool to um, bring me some interesting, interesting um, kind of update on Deadly Possessions that I thought everybody might want to know. So this update is regarding the Divi Box and Kevin Manis, which is the guy that, you know, we thought may have been possessed in the basement. We weren't really sure what was going on, but I think that we have an answer, thanks to Shannon, because I have awesome followers and you guys know that I love to like dig up the truth. So let's chat about this divot box really quick. Okay, so Shannon sent me this link, okay? And the link is from Broad Jam. I don't mind putting this in the description, so look for it down below. This is spoken word poetry. And the author of this page, as you can see right here, is Kevin Manis. So he lives in Oregon. And um, I don't know how Shannon found this. In fact, Shannon, if you're out there, if you feel like sharing how you found this, if you don't, that's cool too. It's totally up to you. But I want to play a little clip for you guys. I don't want to play a big clip because I don't know if it's copyrighted or not, you know, for my video. So just hang tight for one second. The light from the hallway crept into my room, along with the Shadow Man too, I assume. For never before have I seen such a form that could change as a candle's flame. Leaks in a storm. Does it sound familiar to anyone out there? Ding ding, you're right. First episode of Deadly Possessions. We thought Kevin was downstairs basically having a full on possession. I did do my research, which I did not find him linked to anything overseas, meaning London or, you know, any, even, I guess, Australian technically, more of like a London accent. But, anyways, I didn't find any ties there, and I was right. But he does spoken word poetry with that accent, and that exact phrase that he was talking or saying or speaking inside of Zach's museum was this particular poem that he wrote. It's an original poem. In fact, I'm assuming that since the show, he's actually been fairly successful because if you look, there's actually 2,100 views or almost 2,100 views on The Shadow Man Part 1, which is the title of this little spoken poetry that he did on Ghost Adventures, not Ghost Adventures, on Deadly Possession. Now the next question is, is this Zach's fault? Do I blame Zach? Blah, 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 blah. All right, everybody calm down. Here's what I think. There could actually be several different options, and I'm assuming you guys could probably even, you know, give me a couple more ideas of what you think. So my idea is one, Zach legitimately thought he was having a possession, which I'm assuming he did. Looking at him through production, he kind of looked like he didn't know what was going on. Um, he sent Theodore down there, whatever, Kevin came up, but then that's where it ended and that's where I was like weirded out. Now, if I were having someone in my museum and I thought they were having a possession and they maybe came out of it, personally, I would be like, look man, why don't you check out this footage that we just got you, you know, doing some crazy shit in the basement and I would like to know your opinion on that. Do you remember this happening? Especially Zach is so live, interactive, whatever, okay? So I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't see Zach, you know, doing fraudulent things, especially to hurt his image, especially because I have worked with him um, but I'm assuming 
that either in post-production or after this like possession happened, maybe Kevin told Zach, oh, that's one of my poems. I was reciting it because I got nervous. Or maybe Zach did his research or had his researchers do research and they ended up finding this. I mean, if Shannon could find this, surely this couldn't be that hard. It's right under Kevin Manis. I didn't look, I didn't do that much digging, to be honest, because I didn't think I needed to. So Shannon, you're freaking awesome. But do I think Zach's like fraudulent about it? No, but I think that he figured out what it was about when it was too late. That's probably why this whole possession wasn't addressed on actual film. That is my assumption. I'm dead serious. I don't think this was necessarily um, Zach's fault. Another theory that this could be is this dude, Kevin Manis, he's already gotten all this attention, you know, from the divot box, and now he no longer owns the divot box, so now he's downstairs, and this is his prime time to get some sort of TV television time, so he sits there and spurts off one of his spoken poetries. I mean, it's pretty legit if you ask me. And then maybe by the time Zach realized what it was, I mean, Zach didn't want to make himself look bad. Kind of makes him look bad by not addressing it even if he would have actually known about this. I'm assuming Zach seriously knows about this at some point or another because he never addressed it to begin with. I see Zach as the kind of person that would have been like, man, what's this about? Da -da -da. Why did you talk like that? Like, you know, what is this about? So anyway, I don't know. All I have to say is big red flag um, doesn't make things look very good. Um, do I blame Zach? No. Do I think this guy maybe wanted, you know, some camera time? For sure. For sure. It's that 15 minutes of fame thing going on. So there were a couple other deadly possessions I missed from having laryngitis. I know that Peggy was on one and then that like haunted chest drawers was on another. Um, I was actually like... I, okay, like I looked away, honestly, like the whole Peggy thing, I'm an empath, I didn't want to make some sort of a connection with her, and so the warning came up on the screen, and I turned away, and I was like on social media or something, and then I just kind of like forgot, I guess, I thought that Zach was going to show her, and then take her off, and then that was it, no, they ended up doing this like seance thing, and so I ended up looking up during the seance, I didn't have anything affect me, I'm not saying it's not possible, um, I, honestly, I don't think Peggy looked as scary as the doll from, the, the little sailor doll. So maybe that's just me. I didn't I didn't get that feeling from it. So now the Dudley chest thing and it was like the grandmother's handwriting and all that stuff. I don't I mean I don't know. Whatever. I mean it's just one of those items that's like a maybe you'd have to like experience it being, you know, dark or whatever firsthand. Um and then we watched the last episode which was in regards to the mirror and the Charles Manson television. So mirrors have always like kind of creeped me out. I don't know if you guys have ever been into the south where like the, the plantations are, like the super old plantations. And um, if someone would pass away inside of the plantations, they would go throw um, these like big white, you know, maybe sheets or towels or whatever over the mirrors because they were afraid that if someone died, um, they're, you know, they would get stuck in the mirror and then it would be this like they would never be able to cross over to heaven or hell or whatever and they would just be in limbo their whole life so mirrors have always kind of creeped me out i have seen some really creepy stuff in mirrors um so that's probably why it creeps me out that particular mirror i mean once again you would have to experience it for yourself now the charles manson tv that was very interesting to me um i I mean, obviously we all know, you know, the history of Charles Manson. If you don't, you should probably Google it. That's one of those things that you might want to know. But um, the guy, like, I thought it was weird. He bought the car, had all these belongings in it, had all these letters. That's kind of strange. Um, I was, like, kind of skeptical until the basement flooded. And uh, the basement flooded at the museum. And I was like really shocked about that because, I mean, obviously Zach didn't do that, you know. I was kind of stunned though when Zach went to the bottom of the stairs uh, to show that like the water and the basement was flooded. He didn't actually go into the basement to like 
he, you know, he heard noises and he didn't, I, I understand he probably had nice shoes on um, or whatever. I don't know if he was concerned that maybe, you know, he, there were electric cords in the water. Maybe he was concerned that he would get electrocuted. Maybe if there's an electrician out there that would know if that would, you know, be a cause to, you know, be terrified. Now, if it were me, I think that personally I would have been, you know, trying to figure out where the noises were coming from. Uh, maybe he's got like a water fear though or something. What are your opinions on that? Would you guys have gone in to see if there were noises and what they what the noises were coming from? I was kind of shocked to see Zach not. Um, you know, he's so like aggressive. So I don't know if it was like his shoes weren't, he didn't want his shoes to get ruined, if he was concerned about electrical issues. You guys let me know what you think. I've had weird stuff like that happen to me though with like electrical problems and, and I've actually had flooding issues before. So do I believe that's possible? 100%. Now, the only weird thing that I found about that episode was the guy is Charles Manson's grandson and he tells Zach that he wants to go and get baptized, which is cool, good for him, and except he ends up wearing um, Charles Manson's shirt that he gifted his grandson and they, obviously they're in Vegas, like you guys can tell they're in Vegas because like the palm trees and there's like this little like sandy lagoon. But all of a sudden he comes out of the water and like hulks out of the shirt and like screams. And then the episode ended and I was just like. That was weird. Like that made me feel weird. I don't know. I felt weird. Why? I don't know why. It <laughs> just, it felt like, it felt a little cheesy. It felt awkward. I felt like maybe it was should have been private and I shouldn't have been watching it. I don't know. Um, was it fake? Was it weird? It was weird. I don't think the baptism was fake, but the like rah, thing, like I don't. But then again, I'm not Charles Manson's grandson, so I don't know how that feels to be related to um, a serial killer like that. So who knows? So anyway, guys, I'm so glad. Like, what's with this sickness string that I've had? Like a couple. Month, like since like February I've had these like weird I, I don't know I'm over being sick so I'm sorry but you guys have to follow me on social media so that you can stay up to date on everything and um, I can't wait to get back on track here but hopefully you guys like the new set I love hearing from you guys please put messages and comments below only good ones and uh, give me ideas, give me, you know, theories and things to chat about. And I can't wait to talk to you guys later. Talk to you soon, guys.